is all the beginning of unlocking your spiritual capacity. All right. And when you show up for Bible study on Wednesday night, then I'll know you're serious. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because that's where the real learning takes place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sunday morning is more bells and whistles. And Wednesday night is more Sunday school. On, but it's on Wednesday night. Uh -huh. I'm going to ask that you would pray my strength. In the Lord. Yeah. Come on, give me some amens. Amen. Give me some hallelujahs yeah. and all of that other good stuff because what it's going to do is cause me to be uplifted in my spirit, yeah. like you're sitting there Hallelujah. waiting on me to uplift your spirit. Yes. Amen. Amen. I Amen. want to invite your prayerful attention this morning to the third chapter of the Gospel of St. John, John chapter 3. Uh -huh. verses four through seven the writer of this book is of course saint john the baptist who is the author of the gospel of john uh -huh. saint john uh the the three epistles first john second john and third john and that book that a lot of people need to stay away from until you become a seasoned saint the book of revelation Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. St. John chapter 3, we're going to be reading today. If we were in the church house, I would say, I'm going to ask that you would rest to your feet <laughs> for the reading of the word, right. <laughs> which we'll be saying next week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you want to do that at home, you can rest to your feet right now in the name of Jesus. John chapter number 3, verse number 4 through 7. Amen. Amen. Thus says the Lord, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Right. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. Verse number six, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Notice there is a capital S on the God spirit as he pours it down inside of us on the small S on the second word spirit. That's because there is a transaction taking place between us and God. All right. Verse number seven, marvel not uh -huh. that I say unto thee. Uh -huh. He said, I already said it. Mm, Ye must, must be born again. Yeah. We're going to talk about what does it mean to be born again. May God add a blessing for the reading and the hearing of his word this morning. Yeah. Come on, let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning waiting on the spiritual nuggets that you have for us today. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh in this place today on every believer, on every listener, on everyone who has joined the broadcast. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their bodies, heal their situations, touch their children, touch their finances, God. Show them that you got them on your mind today, God. Throw your weight around in their lives today, God. Pour out a fresh anointing today that makes preaching, teaching, and the receiving of your word easy. Yes, Lord. Call somebody's mind to be renewed this morning. Yes. Call somebody's soul to be rejuvenated this morning by the power of your word. And everybody who loves Jesus, shout amen. amen. The grass may wither, the leaves may fade, but the word of our God yes. shall yes. stand yes. forever. forever. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Let him use you, Pastor. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Going to encourage you to take notes. Yeah. I'm dropping some spiritual bombs today. Don't have time to sit around for those who are stragglers. You're either in or you're out today. Amen. The rest Amen. of you catch up at a later date. Hallelujah. 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 As I attempt to undress this text today, I want you to walk with me through the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And ask yourself a couple of questions. Right. Have I previously treated God like that little green leprechaun that I see on the Lucky Charms cereal box? Come on, Pastor. By now, am I willing to admit that I, too, need a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ? Come on, come on. While you ponder over that, let me say something about myself as I do every week in what I call a moment of transparency. Uh -huh. It was only when I learned how to, con somebody say consistently, consistently, how to consistently give tithes and offerings. 
things yeah. that it transformed my thinking uh -huh. from just knowing about God to trusting all the way in God. Yes. But it took that. Uh -huh. Somebody on this, that, that's for somebody on this live stream today. Somebody on this live stream today uh -huh. needs to just go ahead and make up your mind yeah. that you are going to serve the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So what does it mean uh -huh. to be born again? Yes. What does it mean? Yes. What does it really mean? Come on, Pastor. I mean, I'm going to have to break this thing down like a fraction. I do like math, but not that much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so first of all, my assignment is to unlock in all of us. The ideology that is uh -huh. necessary and the methods yes. to, to, to increase uh -huh. and, and, and open up your spiritual capacity. All right. Preach, Pastor. And somebody's going, what does that mean? It means the same thing as what it means to be born again. Yes. Yes. I, I once read somewhere that an old man told a young man, now, uh, try to die young, but wait as long as you possibly can. What did he mean? Last week, we discussed the differentiation between the natural man or woman uh -huh. and that of a spiritual man or woman. Okay. But what does Jesus mean when he says, you must be born again? All right. Born again is not a religion. Uh -huh. It is where you live a life that has been changed yes. by God. All right, Pastor. Changed. Yes. Your life has been, like, you remember the Rubik's Cube? Your uh -huh. life has been changed. Yes. All of the changes that okay. God allows you to. Now, this kind of a relationship with God uh -huh. causes us to move from just knowing God yes. to actually trusting in him. Trusting in him. Yes. I trust in mama. Uh -huh. I know Uncle Joe. Uh-huh. Make it plain, Pastor. I trust in my school teacher uh -huh. because she does the same thing every day and does the same thing every week, uh -huh. the same thing every year. I can depend on my school teacher. All right. All right. Come on. But my cousin, a little bit, <laughs> come on, Pastor. little bit will say one thing and do another. Uh -huh. When you are born again, you are steady. All right. That's good, Pastor. I didn't say you wouldn't get knocked off the line sometime. Right, right. But when you're born again, yes. you are steady uh -huh. with God. Yes. God does not throw you away. Uh -huh. You do not throw God away because uh -huh. you are born again. Yes. Like setting up shop for business. Come on, Pastor. You are steady. Uh -huh. I need a place to work out of. Yes. Do you get my drift? So in, in verse number six, it says that which is a flesh is a flesh. That which is born of the spirit is born of spirit. Uh -huh. There's a big spirit, capital S, right, and there's a little spirit, uh -huh. little bitty itsy bitsy S, because that's the little S is trying to become like the big S. Yes, God. Being on, born God. again, uh -huh. it, uh, it unlocks your, your, your spiritual capacity and increases your faith in yes. God. We yes. start praising God better than we used to. Uh -huh. Always giving oh, God yes. the praise oh, and the yes. worship. Yielding more and more yes. to the voice of God. Yes. That's what he's talking about in Isaiah 1 and 19 Thank where he says, if ye be willing and yes. obedient, uh -huh. ye shall eat the good of the land. Yes. That's what he's talking about in Joshua 1 and 8 when he says, uh, this book of the law shall not Thank depart you, out of thy mouth that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Yes, Somebody right. say that's then. Right. Then. then thou shalt have, make thy way prosperous. Somebody over here say then. Then, then thou shalt have good success yes. because you are surrendering yourself. You yes. are yielding Hallelujah. yourself to the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And that's what being born again uh -huh. is all about. Yes. Being saved and or born again uh -huh. Requires a personal relationship with God yes. through Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. 
But there are too many Christians who have the misconception that all I have to do, honey child, is believe on the word. You see, the word says it like this. It says to those that believe, whomsoever, whosoever will. And that just makes people think, well, I just come in and believe. Well, you, you can go to go to work, but you're not believing for no check. You expect it. So don't come in here talking about with Jesus. All I got to do is believe. You got to expect something because you you got some some skin in the game now, honey child. You 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 got down on both knees once or twice at least. Hallelujah. You talked to God once or twice this year. Hallelujah. Shucks, honey child. We 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 good God from heaven. We 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 think we can just do this with no work. God, no prerequisite requirements. My God, come on, help us, Pastor. Help and it reminds me of the sport of bullfighting. Mm. Where the matador is dressed up. Uh -huh. He's got on his knickerbockers. He's got on his stockings. Right, He's got on his long socks. Yeah. And he has on what looks like a, a British army cap turned sideways. Uh -huh. And he gets chased my God. by an oversized bull with pointy horns. Yes, yes. Take your time, Pastor. Take your time. And there was a misconception that the bull only gets angry when he sees red. Uh-huh, uh-huh. When in fact, the only thing that got his attention was the movement all right, all right. of the cape. Yes. Not the color uh -huh. that he sees. Yes. Somebody say distraction. distraction. The distraction is there. By the matador to make himself appear untouchable My God. until he's not. Uh -huh. And then somebody has to call the bullfighting paramedics uh -huh. to bring in the, st the stretcher. Uh -huh. And thus, that's what happens to many Christians uh -huh. who uh -huh. call themselves Christians who say, I have a relationship with the Lord. Uh -huh. Come on, Pastor. Because every time you attempt to settle into your relationship with God. Uh -huh. Every time that you attempt to come to church, yeah, every yeah, time that you attempt yeah. to give tithes and offerings, uh -huh. life, the devil, uh -huh. or something or another, causes a distraction. My God, my God. Distractions are meant to sever. Uh -huh. They are set up to cut off. Yeah. And like the devil in John 10 and 10, distractions are meant to kill. Steal and destroy uh -huh. whatever you got. Come on, come on. He gives you something to look at, and there's nothing more than somebody to say distraction, distraction to distract you from your relationship with the Lord. My God, my God, my First God. Corinthians two and fourteen uh -huh. helps us understand if you're natural or if you're spiritual. Yeah. I believe you need to be both and just find your balance point. On, it Pastor. says, "But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, uh -huh. for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned." If any of this perplexes you in any way, uh -huh. then the question you should be asking yourself is, "How do I convert from being natural uh -huh. into becoming spiritual?" That's good. Yeah. And when you come to the door, the first thing I would say to you is being saved yes. and or born again uh -huh. requires a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Yes. When we become yes. filled with the Holy Ghost you, and the evidence of speaking in tongues uh -huh. and it gets down on the inside, it unlocks our true spiritual capacity. Right, right. It's kind of like unlocking all of the secrets down on the inside. Yes. So when you read in Luke chapter number 17, uh -huh. verses 20 through 21, uh -huh. we see God's treasure is found where? Down on the inside. Yeah. Now we begin to live a life that pleases him. Good God from heaven. Come on, Pastor. Come on. I, I feel the Holy Ghost in the room today. Yeah. And, and Proverbs 16 and 7 says it like this. Uh -huh. Proverbs says, uh, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, yeah, he'll make God. even your enemies uh -huh. be at peace with you. Yeah. And then he rolls you back a little while to Deuteronomy 28 and 7. On, it says, your enemies may come in one way, uh -huh. but because of your relationship with God, yeah. your enemies will scatter in seven different ways. Yeah. Who wouldn't yeah. want to serve a God like that? Yeah. Now, more now than ever before, 
your relationship, you have a hunger on the inside. Because you're allowing God to do some work down on the inside of you. That's why Luke 17, 20 through 21 says, the kingdom of God is down on the inside. God had to hide it from the devil. And now that the devil knows that he can't steal it from you, all he wants to do is take your reputation and smear it. Because he cannot touch your anointing. All he wants to do is take your attitude and yes, smear it yes, with some bitterness my God, my God. because he cannot steal my God. your anointing. Yes, yes. All he wants to do is mess up your presentations Ooh, Jesus. because on, he God. cannot touch uh -huh. your anointing well, because God hid it yes. down on the inside. Down on the inside. Thank you, Jesus. And even that scripture talks about a scripture if you didn't know the Bible uh -huh. over in Galatians. Chapter number 5, 23 through 23. Yeah. It's really taught the kingdom of God is really what? The fruit of the, the, fruit of the Spirit. Yes, God. You can't have Galatians 5 and 22 uh -huh. until you know where to look for it. Uh -huh. You won't know where to look for it uh -huh. until you look over in Luke 17, 20 and 21. All right, Pastor. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. You have to cultivate a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. This is where your faith gets activated. Jesus. And most people sit around and go, well, the Bible just said believe. Let, let, let me help you with something. Okay. First of all, nothing is free. Amen. Freedom is not even free. Come on, Pastor. You're not free to do nothing. Come on, Pastor. You're going to have to always be held accountable. Uh -huh. Even when we get to that day of judgment. That's right. Everything that we do, we got to be held accountable for this stuff. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we go deeper? Yes. Yes. What is the beginning of this? This this all. Let me say this is all the beginning of unlocking your spiritual capacity. All right. And when you show up for Bible study on Wednesday night, then I'll know you're serious. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Because that's where the real learning takes place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sunday morning is more bells and whistles. And Wednesday night is more Sunday school, on, but it's on Wednesday night. Uh -huh. The second thing that we must do is somebody say, be on watch. Be on watch. We must be on watch yes, that's good, over Pastor. our hearts. That's good, yes. This is part of being born again. Yes. How can you be born again if the devil snatches the word from you every time you hear it? My God, my God. Hallelujah. Proverbs 4 and 23 says it's so plain that a five-year-old could understand it. It says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Yes. Every problem you got is inside of where? Your heart. Not your physical heart. Uh -huh. That's good, Pastor. The center of your thinking. Uh -huh. The heart in the Bible is here. Uh -huh. It is the center of your thinking. Yes. Not the vessel that's pumping blood. Hallelujah. This text comes to challenge us with a warning. Yeah. Listen, at the, listen at what it said. It's basically saying you got to be on watch. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh -huh. We must be on watch yeah. over our hearts. Thank you, you, you have to catch this principle. Uh -huh. Be careful what you think because your thoughts are or what control your life. Come on, come on. That's Be good. careful how you think because yes. your life is shaped yes. by your thoughts. Yes, Keep God. your eyes straight ahead yes, and God. avoid all, somebody say, distractions. distractions. Avoid all distractions. Now, some of y'all say, well, he may not come when you want him. And somebody over here say, well, he always comes on time. Come on, I say he may not come when you want him, but you're going to want him when you come because guess what? Over time, yeah. That crooked path is going to straighten out. Yeah. Over time, that low path is going to lift up. Yeah. Over time, that high thing is going to come down. Yeah, Over cool. time, everything that was messed up is going to be fixed back up. Yeah, everything on, that was yeah. broken up, God is going to put it back together again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to look yeah. better than Humpty Dumpty when he fell off the wall and, and all the king's horsemen and all the king's <laughs> men <laughs> couldn't put him back together again because yeah. this was a job for Jesus. Yeah. Your life is a job 
for Jesus. Yeah. The ability to be able to hold on and to watch over by the yeah. grace of God yeah. is a job Hallelujah. for Jesus. Yeah. But you must first have a relationship with a man named Hallelujah. Jesus. However, there are many so-called Christians uh -huh. and even real Christians. Yeah. Let me see who's on the list here. People I call spiritual junkies uh -huh. on, that are not sir. so fortunate. Yes. Listen to what the word says about them in Mark 4 and 15. Right. It says, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Right. Yet it's, it, it's showing us something. It still requires that we gotta we, we can read the word all we want, but it, you, you, it has to get inside of your heart. Yes, yes, the, the word yes, of God has yes. to get inside of your heart. Yes, the devil could care less if you read the Bible. Uh -huh. He could care less if you get on your knees and pray 40 minutes a day. Yes, yes. He could care less uh -huh. how much time you spend with God. Come on, come on. He's he's not afraid of the God in the Bible. Right, right. The devil is only afraid of one person when it comes to you. Uh -huh. The God that lives inside of you. Yes, yes. That's the only one he fears. Uh -huh. So when he sees you trying to wake up spiritually, come on. Come on. here comes problems. Yes. When he sees you trying to read the Bible, uh -huh. here comes problems. Right, he right. comes and uh -huh. snatches the word away from you. So true. So like a plant underneath the soil, it must be watered by the things of God. In other yes. words, if you pray, do some other stuff. Uh -huh. If you praise, do some other stuff. Yes. If you read the Bible, do some other stuff. Yes, if you Lord. go to church, don't just sit there like a bump on a log. Let God use you. Get up yes. and greet somebody. Hallelujah. Some paper needs to be picked up over there. Somebody over here can run a vacuum sweeper over here. Hallelujah. Somebody over here, we need somebody to play on the piano. Over here, we need somebody who can sing to uh -huh. sing. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whatever's going on, whatever needs to be done, we need somebody who can yes. do the job yes. to come on, do the job. Come on and do the job. Come somebody on. need help getting to the car. Come on, Pastor. Plenty of work to be done. Yes. All you got to do is come do on. some things, yes. the things of God, to, to become God. more like him. That's some people still think that, oh, the devil doesn't exist. And if he does exist, he got horns on his head. Oh, boy. He got a long red tail. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. Uh -huh. How, well, he carries a pitchfork? Come on now. Jesus, come on. When in fact, your biggest devil could be sitting on your job in the next cubicle. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for some of us, because of our self-destructive behavior, your biggest devil is the one you see when you go and look in the mirror. Come on, Pastor. He or she needs to be dealt with. Yes. You need to put some hands on them, and they don't necessarily need to be holy all the time. Come on. The devil doesn't mind you doing church stuff. He's only afraid when the God that lives on the outside of you gets down on the inside of you and wakes up. And you stand up. Yes. And yet, when you when you know who you are, now he's afraid. Because here's the thing: I'm talking about saved versus unsaved. God loves you all, but you need to get saved. Amen. Amen. If you are unsaved, uh -huh. it's like being Superman. <clears throat> you got the big red cape. You Superman. Uh huh. You got the cape, but you don't even know how to fly. Oh my. <laughs> well, that's what an unsaved person looks like calling themselves a Christian. You make it a claim. That's right. You don't know no scripture. My God. You can't call out a demon. Jesus. You don't recognize the demon. When the demon gets on you, you don't even know what the heck is going on. Come on, Pastor. Come because on. you don't have a relationship with God because you are what I call a spiritual junkie. You can't be unsaved and call yourself a Christian and think the devil is not going to come get you. Come on, Pastor. However, if you are saved, uh -huh. then from that place, God can take you, as yeah. the Bible says, from faith to faith. Faith to faith. faith from to faith. glory, glory to, to glory. glory yeah. Only because you are born yeah. again. Yeah. Somebody yeah. say, put some word on it. Put some word. Matthew 26 and 41 says this. Watch and pray that ye enter not uh -huh. into temptation. The yes. spirit indeed is willing, uh -huh. but the flesh is weak. Yes. Even the apostle Paul 
teaches us about being watchful in prayer. Uh -huh. The word itself, watchful, simply means to be aware, be on alert, yeah. be on guard. That's why Peter's instructing us as Christians. Yeah. You got to be alert for what this enemy is doing. Yeah. But, but even Jesus in, in Matthew 26 and 41, he got angry at his disciples because he, he was like, man, come on. I'm out here praying. Who's got my back? Who's yeah. watching over me? He even did it one time before the crucifixion. Remember in the, in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was like, Lord, if it be thy will, yeah. <laughs> if it be possible, <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to get up on this cross and die for all these people. Come on, Pastor. This is Jesus now. Yes, don't, yes. Don't, don't hurt the messenger. Uh -huh. I'm just the messenger. Yeah. Jesus had a choking point moment. Uh-huh. But he didn't choke. But he didn't choke. Come on, Pastor. You're going to have choking point moments on, in your life. Yes, yes. But don't choke. But don't choke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I helping Hallelujah. anybody? Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. Good God don't from heaven. Yes. Hallelujah. After you unlock your spiritual capacity uh -huh. and after you learn how to be on watch, now yes. you must begin to understand something that is different. Uh -huh. You must be born again. Yes, God. Now. You must get to that place called born again. Yes. As I head to my clothes, let me say it like this. Uh -huh. Being born again is having enough spiritual capacity on, to believe in the impossible. Yes. Jesus taught his disciples about dealing with that which appears to be insurmountable. That stuff that looks like it's impossible. Something that looks like I'm just not going to make it through this situation. Come on, Pastor. Come on. So in Matthew chapter number 19 and verse number 26, we get the ear hustle. Jesus talking to his disciples. Come on, Pastor. Jesus, he said, but Jesus beheld them and saith unto them, uh -huh. with men this is impossible, well, but with God all things are possible. All things, yes. All is there anybody out there who understands that with God all things are all possible? Things. Yes, the Bible says that blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Yes, for yes. when he is tried, uh -huh. he shall receive the crown of life, yes. which the Lord hath promised him. Uh -huh. You can find over in James uh, 1 and 12, somewhere around in there. Being born again means following Jesus. Yes, and we follow God. Jesus by reading his word. Come on, Pastor. Because there's power in the word. Of the Lord. Yes, so you read the word. Yes. And you begin to put the word down in your heart. Well, and you allow the word to become your theme song. Yes. And you hold it close to your bosom. Hallelujah. Yes, <laughs> and now you have made it your ringtone. Uh -huh. <laughs> so now when people call your phone, on, blessed and highly favored comes yes. on. Yes. <laughs> but it was the Lord our God. Well, who spoke through John the Apostle. Well, and when John the Apostle came on the scene, yeah. John began to tell us something about a man named Jesus. Jesus.